Hey Alan, hey just gonna take a minute here and go over uh, your sequencer. I finally took some time today to work on it. Um, and what I found out, I'm just gonna show you my diagnostics so far. I don't know what's causing the problem uh, as of yet, but I do know what's going on um, as far as why it's not working. So it's not a power problem, it's not your power supply is running great, it's got the plus and negative 14 volts exactly where it should be. Um, and uh, I'm just gonna show you kind of what's going on here. So what I did first, because it makes sense to go back and look at the clock, uh, which actually is a VCO in this case, which is right here in the schematic. Um, this is your, your actual VCO. All this circuitry right here is it's a discrete oscillator, so that all makes up your oscillator circuitry. Uh, but our interest is right here, uh, at this point right here. So what we've got here, we got this amplifier here, which is working as your pulse width change for your gate time. There's your gate outputs, and there's your LEDs that show you the status of the gate on off. And uh, this is where I'm running into some issues. So what we've got is we're looking at actually the anode of the diode there, D205, which is in front of that uh, amplifier. And as you can see, I'm going to actually uh, show you this on the scope. So right now we have no signal. If I hit the start button though, you'll see it comes up. There's your oscillator running nice and happy. Uh, we can change the frequency as well as the pulse width. So we'll change the, the gate time, which will change our pulse width time. As you can see there on the scope. Let me zoom in a little bit. Maybe it'll be easier. So we can change our pulse width there using the, the gate time control. We can change the frequency of that oscillator using the, uh, the actual clock rate. We can change the clock range switch and you can see it changes the frequency there, which is real slow. Um, go back to a full signal. If we hit the stop button you can see that it will actually stop the signal. If we hit the step mode you can see the pulse as I step through the uh, the steps. And so all that's working. So your oscillator section, your clock section is actually doing what it's supposed to do. I'm going to restart this and I'm going to show you where we're having issues. So if we go, let me zoom back in here. So right now I'm on this diode down here if we go to the cathode of this diode, right here, on the cathode, you will see that we have nothing. There's nothing there at all. And so the status of your LED is also off. So something between there and this diode, we're losing signal. Now, I checked the diode to make sure it wasn't an open diode, and it's actually working fine. The diode appears to be working as a diode. Um, so I don't think it's the problem. It, it acts like there's something loading it down on the other side of the diode. So what that would mean is it means something in here, right here, is shorted or uh, or open. Maybe it's just a full open, but that wouldn't make sense because I still should see it on that diode. Um, so basically that's where our problem is. I, it could be a bad transistor. I'm really hoping it's not this chip. Um, I'm hoping it's not that chip is bad. Because uh, if that's bad, I don't even know what that is. It's a Toshiba, Toshiba chip, or I'm sorry, Sunyo chip, and I don't even know if you could even possibly get those anymore. Um, so I gotta see what's going on there. You do have a coupling capacitor here, which should separate that. Which that, that might be the problem. It could be a bad coupling capacitor. It could be shorted, causing an excessive load from this chip, uh, which hopefully it damages this chip once again. But uh, anyways, that's where we are. And so that's what I've, I found out from uh, looking at the schematic and looking at your unit. Now the other problem is, is I cannot find schematics for seal number uh, below 56,000. And you got 51,000 serial number. And so if I look at the board layout for this schematic, it doesn't match up with your circuit board in this unit and nothing's labeled. This is the joys of Japanese synthesizers. This is why I don't typically work on them too much. Uh, and you can see everything's hard soldered. So it makes it a little bit more uh, aggravating to, to work on in service. But I think I have a plan of attack here now. And just kind of want to show you exactly what I'm what I'm finding here with the, the signal as far as what's going on. And once again, it's still running, so I can go back here on the other side of that diode. And there's your signal. So it's clearly a problem right here. There's, there's clearly something not right with this circuit. I actually checked to make sure it wasn't something shorted with your 
with your gate outputs make sure they wasn't actually the, the, the jacks themselves wasn't shorted and they're not uh, they're fine um, so that's who we are that's what I gotta look into but I uh, just thought you might appreciate a little video here showing kind of what my diagnostics approach my troubleshooting approach here and just give you a good idea of, of what we're dealing with so it's not a power supply problem like I say your power supply is running great plus negative 14 volts are on the dot so everything looks good there it's just something right here in this board but uh, anyways I'll be in touch and we'll uh, talk to you very soon here take care so here's a follow-up to the last video um, I'm actually using an external frequency generator, a function generator, and I've actually got it uh, working as the clock source temporarily, bypassing the gate circuitry. So what I've actually done is I've actually got it running the chip that we suspected could be the problem. I've got it running through its original coupling capacitor right there. I, I pulled it so I could actually eliminate the, uh, the actual uh, VCO that's used to clock this thing. So now with this running, I can't use any of the functions here because they wouldn't work. Um, because it's actually bypassing that uh, that actual uh, oscillator that's used to reset and all that kind of stuff. But as you can see, I've got it running here externally clocked from this uh, this function generator, and it's actually going through two. It's going to the A, and I've got it set for B on. Uh, I, think I got it set for B on four steps, so you can see it go through four steps and it switches back to A. Um, so it lets me know that part of it's actually working. Now I don't know what it's doing CV wise because I'm not even looking there yet. I'm just trying to get the clock and everything, you know, like it's supposed to be running. Make sure that it is actually working before I put all this time into figuring out why this circuit here does not work. So, anyways, that's what we are, and uh, I'm going to keep playing with it here and see if I can figure out why it does what it does. But um, this is a good sign. It shows that the actual sequencing circuitry is actually living. And there's nothing wrong with the actual sequencing circuit, it's just something wrong with that VCO output of this diode and then through the gate circuitry. That's where our problem is. And so that's what we've got to figure out. But uh, anyways, just want to make a little video. I thought you might like to see this. I can change the frequency here to change the frequency at the actual um, the actual device here. And of course I might have to set this down in another range of frequency. There we go. So you can see just how fast I can get here. I hit a point it goes too fast, it just won't clock it at that speed, but I make it pretty slow there too, just using this external. You can see the pulse over there on my scope versus right here. So anyways, just thought you might like to see this kind of troubleshooting stuff. Figured I'd go and do this to make sure everything else is working before I, you know, focused heavily on this circuit that we're having issues with. But uh, anyways, we'll be in touch. Okay, final results of what I've discovered here. And it was actually pretty easy. It wasn't as bad as what I thought. It just took a little while to figure out and to troubleshoot this thing because of uh, the weirdness in it. Um, so what it ended up being, it actually ended up being the amplifier associated with pulse width control, which you can see I've replaced the amplifier right there. And uh, here's your old chip right there. And so what I found is that the actual, it had a DC offset that was really low, it was in the negatives. And so basically it wasn't clocking everything correctly because that DC offset is what it was. So I replaced this chip, it now has the correct DC offset and uh, it actually runs correctly now. So what we'll do, and actually I wired up your switch again as well, where you had uh, taken that out. So that's all rewired. So we got it powered up right now, I'll hit start button. And you can see we've got sequence and we've got the on-off logic uh, LEDs showing the pulse width. We can change our pulse width and you'll see the pulse width still works great. So that's what it was. It just took a little while to figure out because I kept trying to figure out if it was a short. Couldn't find anything shorted. Um, and then it came back to it was this was uh, had a big DC offset negative. Which basically with the negative DC offset, it wouldn't turn on that uh, diode. That's basically what it turned out to be. It was a diode. It wasn't the diode. It just wasn't turning it on because it had a big DC offset. And so that was your problem. So it took a little while to find out, like I say, but I'm, I think it's going to be, be good for you now. I'm going to run it for a little while, see if it acts up again. But that was definitely an issue. 
But uh, anyways, just want to make this little video series. Hopefully this, uh, hopefully this is kind of interesting to you. But uh, anyways, once again, appreciate it, and I'll uh, be in touch. Take care.